go. Well, it's happened. They finally done it. This is now what I would like to call the best thing that has ever come out of IDW Sonic. It was able to have something resembling an overall theme. It was act. It didn't leave me miserable by the end of it. And more specifically, Sonic wasn't completely garbage the entire time. So I'm like, yes, this is the best thing that's ever come out of IDW Sonic. Good job, Barnes. Still a four out of ten. Oh. <laughs> We tried. <laughs> yeah, so let's just roll in and try to talk about this a little bit. So um, I think, so Waffles and I ended up discussing this a little bit, uh, discussing this yesterday after reading it, but Derp, uh, and we kind of had similar thoughts on the whole thing, but Derp ended up reading this today, and I think he's going to have a little bit of different thoughts about this. So uh, Derp, would you like to give your thoughts a little bit on like a overall scale, maybe your I believe you're a little more positive on this, so I think you're a, a better way to just try to set the proper tone of this conversation. And you said right. you had something else you wanted to add to it for yeah. oh, IDW in general, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Cool, uh, cool. We'll so, so, like, I I think I started off reading, like, IDW when the Metal Sonic Heroes 2.0 arc kind of dropped. Um, mm-hmm. I kind of caught up just, just about as the arc finished, and... I thought when I first read that, that it was kind of okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that when I first read it, I was a bit more positive to it. But in retrospect, I am a lot more cynical now because I can kind of see through it all and how very weak and surface level and just, it's not bad. It's just not great compared to what I think I would like out of Mm -hmm. like a Sonic story. Um, and then I think things just immediately nosedived from kind of mid to painful once it got to the whole Zombot arc, the metal virus. Mm-hmm. Um, and then straight after that with the, the, the amnesia arc, which isn't really an arc, it's just two issues that just kind of f- loops around to fix in this, this overdramatic ex machina. <laughs> um, and besides maybe Tangle and Whisper, which I thought was okay, mm-hmm. um, I've, I have I just kind of stopped reading. It, I was that left on just a sour note that I just I just quit uh, compared to you guys where you've continued to read. But I have been sat in the back taking notes and listening through the 20-odd issues and the mini-series throughout that's dropped since the 30-odd issue. And... I, I un, until the the new arc drops, uh, I will be keeping it that way, with one exception, which was the metal Scrapnik Island arc. Um, I don't remember when I first saw this, but I think I was just kind of like, you know what, fuck it, I want to get back into IDW. Let, let, but 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 this seems like a self-contained little short story, and uh, and and I love, I think, uh, hey. Mm-hmm. When this drops, can you know a guy that's got like the pages or whatever? Send them over. I want to read it. Um, and uh, once it dropped, issue one, I thought that it was surprisingly good. It had I had nitpicks with it, but I was pleasantly surprised. I wasn't ripping every single page apart. I wasn't. I didn't come out of it with a migraine, and I wasn't questioning: Am I a Sonic fan? Is this really the franchise for me anymore? I actually came away with it with more like positive thoughts than negative for once mm-hmm. from an IDW issue. And that was a consistent thought that I had with every reoccurring issue. And I was and I, I'm pleasantly surprised. And I had a smiling grin on my face once I finished issue four. And uh, again, uh, thank you, thank you, Daniel Barnes. <laughs> uh, I, I I'll let you two lead on now. Well, uh, actually, I have a question for you. So, what would you say is one of the better parts of the story? I want to. I want to try to keep the positivity going before we start. Before we yeah, start well, yeah. What was something that? Because uh, you know, you said that uh, you kind of dropped out of the comic and you had no interest in coming back. So, what about this drew you? With, whether it was the the art or the story or anything, like what, yeah. uh, what was a consistent thing that by the end of it you're like, dang, that was good to read. I enjoyed that. It was definitely 
part of the reason was definitely the self-contained nature where it seemed to be just completely detached from the main continuity of the comic series uh -huh. but what definitely yeah but what definitely helped was the fact that it had this like unique premise where it's like oh the sonic and tails get like on an island and there's some crazy stuff going on mecha sonic mk2 oh shit! and uh metal knuckles oh how are they gonna like add those into the cast and i'm and I'm, i was immediately intrigued by like the concept the the characters returning like I, i'm i'll be honest i'm a sucker for those characters as, as insignificant as they are in the franchise uh -huh. um mm -hmm. and again the, the self-contained nature of it where it's like oh i don't have to care about all the the baggage of the main comic mm -hmm. with like one exception which i think will definitely get into like later on um being like a throwaway oh. line um so yeah i it was definitely like uh, just interesting to just to want to read and uh, i'm kind of glad i took that shot and read it gotcha gotcha well I, if, if i could oh yeah go ahead love <laughs> Uh, I actually totally get that. Like, I've seen a couple of people say, like, this is closer to the tone that they should be doing with the tone and structure of what they should be doing the main line. And I completely agree. Like, forget all my other issues. I think one of the bigger problems with IDW Sonic is that it always dedicates like 10, 15, 20 issues to this one idea and just keeps it going way longer than it ever needs to. Like, we kind of got that a little bit in 2021 where they start being a little more episodic. But most, but outside of the stuff around Bell, which you can also argue that was meant to be the whole arc, almost every story up to this point is just this elongated focus on this one story idea. So it really would help if they just started making it a lot more episodic. You can have elements kind of like flow in and have consequences that show up later, but having more self-contained stories, I think would be a really good idea to not only keep the pace of the main story go going, but makes it a lot easier to rotate into a different idea. Like, hey, you put out this one idea, didn't go so great. Well, we don't need to dedicate an entire year to try and make it make sense. We can just roll into the next one. So I actually do think that I totally get where you're coming from on that derp, and I completely agree with you. It would help yeah. if they were a little more episodic. Yeah, I think structure-wise, this is one of the most uh, solid of the, mm -hmm. the, I mean, it might be the most solid of the whole thing. You know. It's definitely not. It's definitely not perfect, but compared to the main book, this is, and this this is leagues above everything I've read. Oh, I think great. what it, I think what it also has going for it is uh, the art. Um, I think the while I have some criticisms for uh, more and more of like character expressiveness in terms of like mm -hmm. how it depicts the characters' emotions, I think the actual like um, aesthetic of the arc is like mwah, perfection. Uh, I love. Very... I love, all the, I love all the grime. I love all the, uh, like it, it, it looks like a graffiti grime, if that makes any sense. Like it just yeah. like, it has, it has this like splatter effect to everything. Um, it also, it also feels very unique to mm -hmm. anything we've ever seen. I think from like a Sonic, like a, a location before. Um, I don't think we've ever seen like a, like an, a, an atm atmosphere scenery, uh, like, like a scenic, like, like all this rusty kind of like I don't want to say desert, like very orangey landscape outside, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and all this like run down locale. Like I don't think we've seen like a place like or this like before. or like it's it's constantly um, changing the lighting. Like I love the little scene where, as far as visually, I love the little scene where he's just taking all the little um, egg robos and they're they all have their guns or whatever, and like there's like a yellow light to the to the room. Um, oh yeah, and like that you know. That you know, they're, it's just using color and all these different ways to like really set the vibe. Um, and so I think looking at it basically like, uh, if I was just like skimming through it or whatever, I think that is like the most fun part about it. It's just that every every page looks like you could probably hang it up on your wall and kind of just like appreciate looking at it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the the art has always been consistently good in IDW. That is the one praise I will give the entire the whole run. Uh, I think there was like one issue. Uh, early on, which looked very off, like in the in the main comic, not a uh, Scrapnik, but besides like one issue that I thought was a bit odd, the the artwork has been consistently great, and I do think Scrapnik looks probably even greater because it's it's a uh, self contained and uh, a short run, so I assume it's they've got like easier like uh, resources to like use around, whereas mm -hmm. I think like the main comic is probably like a lot more 
spread thin. Maybe that's just a guess. I, I'm not too sure how it works, but yeah. But that yeah. But I, I agree but, with the with your take. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of the art, love? Um, honestly, you guys kind of covered all of it. I think a lot of it does do a good job of making sure it sets the tone really good with uh, using with it really good at using the colors to set a proper atmosphere atmosphere and feeling for every frame that we're supposed to be in. And I do agree, a lot of it looks exceptionally pretty. Um, I really don't have anything else to add for what you guys were covering for. I think the art looks stellar in this issue uh, throughout this entire arc. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, someone has pointed this out that I think this is the only arc in all of IDW that has had an instant. Uh, artist for the whole thing mm -hmm. um which is cool oh, and, and uh, yeah uh, i was saying that a lot on twitter i don't know if that's true or not but it sounds sounds about right because i can recall pretty much most of the arcs kind of changing aesthetics throughout like i think evan's probably done like some of her arcs consistently but whatever regardless it looks really cool um yeah, yeah. and so yeah um trying to think anything else uh no that's it that's all i liked <laughs> yeah uh, Derp, do you do, what did you like about the characters and or story? Uh, I guess uh, should I start chronologically, or do we want to just like go all over the place? Uh, let's follow just do, your heart. Let's yeah, you can follow your heart, but I think um, if we do chronologically, that'll just slow us down. So if you just want to pick like a character and then talk about whatever you want about them, that you know uh, you can start wherever you want. I, 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 uh, I loved the concept of like this rundown place in the middle of the ocean that's just a bunch of like like a i don't know what the word would be but a bunch of like robots that have malfunctions and mm -hmm. they they're just peaceful and they're doing their own like little robot things just living on their own and when i when i got to that part i i immediately kind of like fell in love i'm like oh oh, oh god this in, an, an interesting concept that's like never been done before in the franchise uh, I assume it's probably been done in maybe Archie or Fleetway, but I I wouldn't know because I've read. Uh, those. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Oh no, or at least then, not, yeah. not not to this extent. Like there's the Robo Hobo Jungle, but that's like a joke. So like... <laughs> then then yeah, like this is a concept that's never really been explored before, and I I immediately was like, okay, this is great. Please do not go back on this. And the I was I I think I was scared. I know. Remember, I remember texting you, love. Like, oh god, are they gonna? Are they going to make all the robots evil? And then Sonic's got to destroy them all. And it's going to be sad. Um, but they never did that. With, like, maybe one, two exceptions. But they kind of give a little throwaway line to those two mm -hmm. ex uh, to those uh, exceptions. Uh, they keep all the robots themselves. And I was so happy by the end. Because it's, it's just so... It, I, I love the concept. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, I, uh, yeah. do, do I think they... Do mm -hmm. I think they explore it that well? Not too much, but I do just kind of like it as its own thing. So you like it? At, you like the vibe? Yeah, I do. I do like the vibe. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Because because uh, yeah, what I was gonna say is that my main issue with the Scrapnik Island is that I was rereading it today, and I got mm -hmm. to the part with Sigma, and uh, that's his name, right? Sigma. Yes. Yes. Sigma. Uh, and like. I really like his idea of like he he woke up and he was the only one that was kind of awake and then he he you know started piecing all these uh badniks back together. But my main problem with um that through line is that we I didn't really get a moment of like I, I feel like IDW does this a lot where they try to just kind of they go, "Oh, look, this, you know, th this concept is uh for Sigma is that he is being nice to these poor uh, lost robots um, and he's helping them. Isn't that really nice? And I go, yeah, that's really nice to think about. But in the story, I would have liked to have seen the moment that caused him to want to do that because he's an Eggman robot. The what, why? The why? Yeah, like, why, yeah. why should I care that he's doing that? Just just simply that it's nice of him? That's mm -hmm. totally fine. But I don't have... I, I was trying to find a moment where I would connect to Sigma and like whenever like... Mecha's knuckles gets destroyed or you know he gets hurt i would be like oh no he's such a good guy i don't want to i don't want this poor guy to get hurt you know he's trying so hard but that never really there's never really any struggle for him as a character in terms of like uh like this is kind of a tentative piece i'm trying to keep or like i've worked really hard to like there's not even a part where it's like i worked really hard to to make you know to make this home for these people and i you know i really just want you know them to be happy so sonic you know if um you know 
uh, you know, if you could, you know, try to keep, you know, your smashing to a minimum, you know, just any any part of him that would sell him as like a person. But instead, when I read it, it, it is literally that he wakes up and then the next panel is he is fixing a, a bad neck. And I just mm-hmm. wanted to see what was it that caused him to want to do that. I can assume it's yeah. just because he's nice, but that's boring to me. I don't care I, that you're just, think, you're just nice. I, yeah. I, I agree with you because when I first, like, I think by, like, issue two, I had I, I think I already formed, like, my own opinion on Sig where I'm like, I like Sigma, but I don't really know why I like him. And I, and I think I know why now. And I think it's just because of the vibe of him where he's just like this cheery, fun little guy. The thing is, though, is that he really does kind of lack more of a uh, like a background and a character. I, I I kind of like look back on his dialogue now, and I feel like he's more of just like an expositional character, where it's like here's oh, here's all the yeah here's all the plot elements, mm-hmm. and I'm helping out in the small ways that I can just to keep a few things going along. Um, and just an additional note, uh, which I kind of wanted to jump back on with my about like the concept that isn't too explored is maybe the island itself where it doesn't really feel like a, like as important of a, of a locale that it sets itself up to be. And I remember Lav and I reading like the first issue again where we, we got to the part where it's like, welcome to Jurassic Park. And we're like looking over this cliff and it's like, here's Scrapnik Island. And Tails is like, whoa, a, a, a robot city or something and me and lava are just kind of like staring it's like, out it's trash it's, <laughs> yeah, just, it's, it's just, not it's even, just a it's pile not, of junk it's not even a, it's not even trash though it's just like uh like a like a just a i'm uh, uh fuck i got like like brown it's, like it's just like a gold color color it, like, yeah it's just ground <laughs> It's just ground. Yeah, because because obviously, like the point is that it's scrap, but he he sees all the possibilities. But no, legitimately, it just looks like oh, it's there's ground over there. Like I don't even yeah, know what he's it, it looking. Just I don't know looks what he's like looking it's at. Ground. And I was I was kind of hoping right that this was just like a little like uh like an error on the artist's behalf, and it's like oh, uh, uh now nah, maybe it's just like a far away shot that that isn't too. Uh, but we're gonna get like close to well. it. But when we get yeah. close to it, oh, it's gonna be like a like a city or something or or something and then nope. like the next issue came and it's just ground and i was like oh this is it besides that it's just like the underground area uh, where it's like a bunker uh, which is a cool place but i was kind of open for more outside just to like set it up as more of a uh variety place but there's a, a few more locales on the island itself but it's just an open groundy area mm-hmm. yeah so that so definitely that definitely bummed me out yeah um, and so from a from a premise perspective that is what i feel like just just off the bat um held me back from ever being able to love this arc is just that sigma who's like a very that should be a very easy character to care for and like he's gonna get kidnapped and he like like he's really sad when mecha knuckles gets destroyed I should care about this guy and, and want to see like his little peaceful home and what he really worked hard to do. But no, it really does just feel like he just did his job. And we want to explain how Mecha Sonic and all these badniks are here. This is Sigma's backstory. He woke up and then he fixed them, but it's not, but a a story would be Mecha Mecha or Sigma woke up and he felt lost or he, he didn't know what to do. And then uh, his arm was broken and he fixed it so that he could get back to destroying Sonic or something. But then he looked over and saw an egg pond that was like half broken. And then he, he looked at his wrench and then he was like, you know what? And then he went over and helped it. And then it's like, there you go. That was the spark. It was just this one moment where he was already working on himself. And then he, he had a choice and he was like, you know what? No, uh, he looks like he needs help. It's like, oh, now I see that Sigma had this moment where he, he had some sort of humanity. Oh, that's kind of interesting. But no, it's literally just he wakes up and then he fixes the robots. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, and it's not got any dialogue with it, so it's very it's very much like a moment where you just kind of have to like insert the current day characterization of Sigma onto the prior like onto the flashback scenes where it's like, what was he thinking in that moment? That, I think that would be fairly important to know. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you think, Love? To be honest. I don't, I've been kind of chilling back for the most part because I don't have any major thoughts about Sigma. I agree with both of you that 
one, we don't really get a proper buildup or reasoning as to why he ends up going from being someone who's supporting Eggman to he is now going to be the leader of all these scrapnicks. It's not really that. It, there's no proper characterization for his why or his motivation or how he ends up getting here up to this point. But that doesn't bother me as much because at the end of the day, he is here to be support. He's here to be support. He's here to just give a voice to be the voice for all the other scrap decks. And I'm wild about that, but that's fine. Right. So you just just kind of took him for what he was and it wasn't really something you were worried about. Right. But here's the thing. One, I agree with you. I agree with you guys about Sigma and this is something that they easily should have fixed. But my problem is I can take, I would want to take all those criticisms and apply that to Mecca because I actually think these problems are much of, these are, these problems are much worse for Mecca because unlike Sigma, Mecca is meant to be the heart of the story. He is meant to be the focal point of what this story is trying to go for. But Barnes seems to have the same problem Stanley kind of does with their scripts, where it seems like they're never like too comfortable or have too clear of idea of what they want the central conflict to be. And yeah. they just keep kind of changing and shifting things around uh, in order to just either keep the tension up or just because they don't think it's interesting enough on its own. And it makes yeah. it really hard to get invested with that character. And that becomes a massive problem with Mecha. Like, first off, they try saying this whole story like it's supposed to be a horror theme. Let's just get this out of the way. That went absolutely nowhere. If anything, it probably would have been better for both setting up Mecha sto- Mecha story as well as everything with this island if they didn't try forcing in that horror theme. Because that did not matter for the other three issues. Yeah, yeah I definitely because even when uh, Mecca comes back, they don't really play into it that much. It's just mostly like, "There's Mecca, he's gonna fight us," but it, he doesn't feel any more scary, I guess, than any other person we'd be fighting. You know? Yeah. So sorry, yeah. go ahead, go ahead, uh, uh, Derp. Yeah, yeah, I, f- I feel like the the whole like uh, antagonist part of the whole story, like the uh, like the main reoccurring threats, don't uh, really work as well as I think they want them to. Mm-hmm. I think uh, I think a lot is riding on um, on just the cool coolness factor of it's that character I recognize, and I mean, I- I'll be honest, I do think Mecha Sonic has a goat design, but oh, yeah. Um, yeah, but I think that might be carrying maybe the I think the design itself may be carrying the plot a bit, where it's like, well, it's he looks like cool, but does anything, his actions? Anything- anything is happening with this character who looks cool. I want to see them on screen a bit more. Uh, I will just watch <laughs> like that kind of thing. I'm just yeah. like, yeah. I'm just like, and I, and I mean that in like a, a sincere way. Like I've had shows where like, uh, I'm not really into it that much, but there's like one character who just has like a specific voice or the way they look is really cool. And when they're on screen, I'm just like, well, I'm having fun. And I'm not really yeah. worried about it too much. Yep. That that's literally the reason for my icon right now. I have my own problems with lunatics, but I love my boy Tech. So yeah, I totally get you on that. It's yeah. I would like to call that the SAO principle, where it's like it's a mess, but the characters look great here, so you're up up for following it. Oh yeah, that that's true. Yeah, the, yeah. Um, I kind of just to rewind just a little bit because sure. I, yeah, I, I think I, I also just kind of wished we had a, a few more maybe off moments where it's like, okay, before we get into all the, the drama and the plot and all the fighty bits, I kind of hoped for a little bit more uh, downtime moments where it's just the characters maybe like exploring the island, or at least what's of it, and maybe explaining like, what do you guys do here? <laughs> like, do you just kind of T-pose until the, the characters arrive? Or do you mm-hmm. have uh, actual lives with maybe like, stuff going on and yeah that's whole society like well and i think that that ties into mecha sonic in the sense of like do we only get really get like one scene in his little flashback where he's like he has like a little happy you know eye emoji um he's kind of like playing with the badniks and it's like i feel like it would have been nice to see like what what do you guys do (laughs) like you said like what do you guys what do you guys do just play a ring around the rosy this is the this is the problem i was talking about i spy (laughs) <laughs> and this is what I was talking about with that first issue. Like, instead of spending all of this time trying to have like some lame horror scene that doesn't yeah. go anywhere, the I, first act should have been about establishing what's what they do on Scrap Island, getting you invested not only with the Scrapniks, not only with Sigma, 
but especially Mecca, because the whole story is supposed to be about us getting invested with uh, Mecca's conflict in the first fucking place. But they don't really allow Mecca to become a proper character in his own right until arguably halfway through the third issue. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I, I definitely look back on the first issue as the weakest one because mm -hmm. it. Because they spend. I, I, I don't know. After, they spend like a third of it with the horror thing, right? Yeah, yep. I don't know if it's. I don't know if it was like actually advertising this as some kind of like suspenseful thriller kind of thing. But they were. This was. Yeah, they, this was, they were. They, there was like a Halloween release too during Halloween. So. Okay, I don't. I don't want to like put words in people's yeah. mouths and lie, uh, which is why I'm like, oh, okay. Um, no, you're but good. yeah, that first issue in retrospect, it definitely kind of, it wastes time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just wastes time doing a thing, and when once you get to the plot twist towards the end of the issue, it, it makes everything that happened before even worse. Mm -hmm. um, and and that's, that's, that's added on to the fact of what happens later. It's like, we spent one issue of this, this four-part miniseries doing this, and the first issue just doesn't work when, at all, when, like, Sark's being chased the whole time, and then at the end it's like, no, they're friendly. And and later on, they talk. <laughs> so, like, at any time, they could have been like, Sonic, we're not uh, attacking well, you. Well, right? no, uh, well, I'll defend the book on that. The only reason they can talk later is because of Tails' translator thing. Yeah. Okay, I will I will take away my point. Either well, way, I'll, why did, I'll, I'll add on. Why did Tails... Why did Tails just leave Sonic there? That's the main problem. Yeah, yeah that's the go problem ahead. The, huh? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, that's, that's also the weird thing about, like, the whole horror setting is that it only ends up being a horror setting because it's needlessly dark throughout the entire egg carrier, and they leave leave Sonic in the dark alone with no, with no ideas about what's supposed to be going on or why. So yeah, that's like in the pitch where black. the horror elements come from. Huh? Yeah, like in pitch black. To be, yeah. To, to be fair, they do have like a. They, I don't think they have really much electricity going on. No, but what I, I mean don't... is, why was Tails just not with them? Oh yeah, no, that's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> why would you just leave? Why would you just leave your friend there? Or or Sigma, you know, because then Sonic would wake up and he'd be like, you know, he could just be like, wait, 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 you know, you know, he could talk to him at least. You yeah, know? yeah, it's 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 uh it's very strange. They didn't even uh, give an excuse, right? They weren't even nope. like, oh, no. something came up and like I had to go take care of it. They were just like, we were just in ten other rooms. Yep. Yeah, it's very strange. Uh, did Sonic uh, did Sonic kill anyone during that section? Well, I guess destroy is the word. Nope. Okay, that's good. No, no, no. If Sonic did that. That would th this would be a very different story. <laughs> yeah, and it's like. Like, again, I'm someone who, like, I can forgive, like, a, a premise contrivance or, like, a contrivance or two. And this isn't even about that. It's just a matter of you literally wasted my time. Because this yeah. never – this this horror aspect never comes back. No, um, it and it and it's And it's, like, the most basic bait and switch of, like, they look scary, but they're not. The end. And, <laughs> and, and, just, and just on the safe side, because I can see at least one IDW fan coming in. What about that fight during the issue three when Mega Sonic is sneaking up on them? That's not horror. He's just teleporting back. That's not even horror. That's just him teleport. Uh, him just speeding back and forth between being from them, being behind them. I don't want to count that as being horror. Like any action series worth a damn in the dark and pull that off. I wouldn't wouldn't count that under any degree. Well, and also again, it just doesn't like. It's not like a. Uh... It's not like a scene of like Tails kind of like walking around and like there's like a monologue going on and then like Tails is like here's here Aim's gun oh there's nothing over there you know he keeps talking Aim's over here he's not there and then you know Mecha and Sonic says some like one liner and then it's he's like right above him and then we cut away you know that kind of thing like no yeah. he just fights Tails like an action series whereas yeah, yeah. like if you wanted to sell the horror aspect you would do something like that where it's like he's giving the monologue and then you see him at the last second. Tails goes to move, and then what happens to Tails? Oh no, he comes back and he sees Sonic, and it's like, hey, what happened to my friend? And he doesn't say anything. It's like, oh no, did he kill Tails? You know, obviously we you wouldn't think that anyway, but you know, just for the sake of in universe or like the framing or the directing or whatever, that would be a horror moment, you know, or that would be a uh, at least a high tension, you yeah. know, a, a thriller yeah. moment, I guess. So. Uh, I think uh, I just want to throw this in before I think uh, I'm going to have more positives to say about the other stuff. Uh, yeah, go for it. I, uh, I don't get 
what they were doing with the uh, metal knuckles at all. Like they they <laughs> introduce him, they introduce him as a bad guy, and I think that was the main like moment where I'm like, oh no, is he gonna like corrupt the other robots and then they go evil? That's not what happened. But nope. at the same time, I'm like, what is his purpose? Like he just kind of shows to up whack, with like red to eyes. Whack Mecha Sonic, right? Yep. To <laughs> whack, to one be a red herring. And two to whack Mecha Knuckle, Matt, to whack Mecha Sonic, so he ends up turning into the new villain for the rest of the arc. Yeah, yeah like I, I, I just remember like reading through, and I'm like, what? It, what is this guy's deal? <laughs> uh, yeah, he's yeah, got he's... he's got the OVA hat, poggers, but like, <laughs> yeah. Besides, besides that moment, uh, besides that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. No, that's a yeah, and again, that's I'm like sitting here. I'm like, yeah, no, I like that they brought back all these old characters, like the metal knuckles or whatever. But I'm just mm-hmm. like, I feel like you should have done literally anything with them. And I guess people would say like, oh, but they fight Mecha Sonic. And I'm just like, it's just, I guess it just doesn't mean anything to me when like Sonic is just kind of chilling out and like, yeah, sure, he's getting attacked and he can't he's, run, but like, I'm not afraid for him at all. And there's not a, like any tension. He is definitely <laughs> the. I think. This all this all, this is the this is the nitpicks that I already had before, where it's like I wish the island was explored a bit more, but I can kind of look over it a little bit. But I think the me- metal knuckles whole thing is definitely a weak point, where it's like, why did he have to be just kind of evil and then just kind of whack metal when he'll start yeah. me- Mecha Sonic? Mm-hmm. I kind of would have found it more interesting if he was like an like an alternate knuckles, where it's like I'm the protector of this island, or I protect my my hat. Nobody touched my head. I mean, I'll just, I'll, I'll just get down to brass tacks. I think the problem is that he's just boring. He's lame. Like he's just, he's just, he's just just, just lame. (laughs) Again, uh, it's it's what I said. It's, it's exactly what I said before. It's like the design carry carries the actual characterization, Mm -hmm. like and the motives. Because I I mean, with with metal knuckles, there, there are none, right? (laughs) It's all well, that's, no, but that's, what I, that's what I mean. Is like from, even as nothing that's actually meant to be a character. So I just read through it a little earlier. The whole point here is that he was originally designed to guard the Master Emerald, but when he ended up getting junked, Sigma couldn't find a way to reprogram him to become just normal. So and he would still just lash out. So they just designed him to be like the guard dog for the whole island. But Mecha, but Mecha Knuckles decides to still try to attack Sonic because he still has that coding somewhere inside of him. Um so they, that's the whole reason why. Yeah, and, and they just they just fight in a room, like just in a in a square box room. And it's just like that's to me is the biggest problem. It's like, okay, so he's like this looming threat and he's like a red herring. Could you at least make like his fight cool? Like they don't it's it's literally just that he attacks Sonic and then Mecha Knuckles throws him, they like clash or something. And then he does well, like a little spin attack, but they're just in a room. They're just standing like in a hallway. It just looks well, really this lame. Is kind of, this is kind of a problem with IDW Sonic in particular. And both of you feel free to push push back against me on this. I think this series is always going to struggle having any fight scenes not be garbage for two reasons. One, they don't really do a good job of establishing contrasting motives between characters, which means that on a character and a thematic level, it's always going to end up being the all the fights are always going to feel a little hollow at the end of the day. But secondly, no matter how good the art is, they don't really try doing anything with the fight mechanics other than just kind of showing them punching and kicking each other and dashing around one another. There's no fun with playing off of the mechanics. No one has any kind of interesting powers. We don't really see how uh, the powers they end up doing anything creative or anything not using the environment. Good. Right, or using the environment. Like, we were complaining about this, like, Waffles, we were complaining about this last night with issue four, where Sonic was fighting against Mecha Sonic, and we found that so boring. It was partially just because, one, the motives for... They had a technical motive to fight, but the thematic contrast they had between each other was really kind of weak. It just kind of was just made up by that issue at that point. Yeah. But then when we end up getting to just the visuals the actual mechanics of how they're supposed to be fighting against each other, it just becomes, oh, them just trading blows with one another. There's nothing really interesting to see of, like, how they're using their abilities, how they're using their abilities against each other, either visually or just in, like, a script version. This is what usually kind of separates 
shown in from the chaff basically because even like the dumbest most bare bones shown in stories like bleach or bleach or fairy tale they usually end up doing something of a good job to make sure like even if the power mechanics are stupid they're at least interesting to see how these mechanics and abilities end up working off of one another we don't really get that here yeah, because I'm looking. I'm looking at the fight right now. It's literally just that he uses his little extendo arm. Sonic's like, "Whoa!" And then Mecha Sonic grabs him by the head, rolls him into the ground, and throws him into the wall. And then, yeah, they just like hit each other back and forth. There's a little flashback scene. That's a separate thing. Um, and then, yeah, he gets up, grabs him by the head, and spin dashes him. And it's just mm -hmm. like, yeah, I agree that like I'm looking at Mecha Sonic. He looks sick as hell. I'm mm -hmm. looking at Metal Knuckles. He looks really cool. But I'm just like. It's just to me, it's just noise. Yes, uh, and that's my problem with it, and that's why like metal. That's why metal knuckles to me just doesn't feel like any threat because we're not we're not doing anything with the directing of like they're in some room and like he's looming over Sonic. Sonic didn't like fall down a pit or something, and not like a pit, but you know like fall down and like oh his foot's you know caught and he needs to move, and then metal Sonic comes in and picks him up, and it's like oh thanks buddy, but now he's looming over Sonic. Like no, they're just standing in a hallway. <laughs> just hitting each other. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of my problem. But I mean, that's I, that's pretty much all I have for that. But uh, Derp, did you have what did you think of uh, Mecha Sonic as far as his issue for uh, his his character? What he wanted to do, yeah. like was all that stuff. Were you interested in that? I I was uh, I was interested like the moment they interest like the the in, uh, introduced him in like the pay like the issue covers, but um, I was definitely very pulled in the moment they kind of established like oh something's gonna something's kind of going on here and it's it was the scene in particular where Mecha Sonic's got like this flower in this like this red lit room and like that's important that's gonna be a Shekhov's gun I just know it. I know it. It wasn't. Nope. But uh, anyway, I was like, oh, cool. He's got humanity. That's very clear. Um, and I wonder how this will go on in the story. And uh, I don't think they hit all the home runs, but I feel like they did do a fairly decent job. Um, I loved the fight where Sonic uh, is it is it Sonic and Mecha yes. Sonic or is it is it Mecha Sonic and and Metal Knuckles I'm trying to remember now I need to, I, I should have should have done a look back but um Are you talking about when the glitch flashback happens yes that's yeah, that, that's with the uh, Metal Knuckles yeah that's that's a great scene um and I and I think that is definitely like possibly like a like a top 50 Sonic the Hedgehog moments in, in my book visually uh, cool. i would visually i'd agree it's like yeah. fantastic like with all the glitching effects and the uh the panel layouts and just like the him falling into the void and it's like red around him Mwah. like i said e each page i could like hang up on a wall yeah um i just kind of felt a little bit sad because what i want what i was hoping the scene of that was was like mecha sonic having like some kind of resurgence of like some kind of ptsd where it's like oh no i'm 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 traumatized by my death because i died like twice uh because in like sonic free and knuckles uh i think it's implied or at least at least here it's implied that he both got beat up by sonic and knuckles yeah that's how um, it happens in the game and yeah. and i think it i think the concept of like oh oh shit i died like twice and it's these guys fault um and i and i'm going through a lot now i thought that was as a concept very interesting to maybe explore they don't do anything with it and right. i don't think it's what they intended to do but um i at least thought that was an interesting idea i don't think they I, but they again i don't think well, they were going for that which well uh, here's the thing you're not wrong they did kind of go for that it's just they didn't frame it that way because instead of it being about directly his ptsd about him losing Excuse me. It's instead about um, him being a his failure. Abandonment issues with his daddy. Yeah, he's and, he's trash. Like that idea. Yeah. 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 And um, I'm not gonna say it's a bad idea in a vacuum, but this is where Mechasonic is, uh, where 
this is half the reason why I Mega Sonic is half the reason why I give this a four out of ten. Because the conflict of the story makes or breaks depending on how much the audience can give a can get a reason to give a shit about Mechasonic. But Mechasonic's whole thing is basically just he feel he's dealing with his abandonment issues, and because of his abandonment issues, he needs to make this everyone else's problem. Uh, go off and attack everyone else, and tries to body swap and steal Sonic's body, and. Uh, and I'm just like, which, and then which, after which doing just all suddenly that, introduced, like, huh? like just like suddenly just introduced in like yes. the last issue. Se- oh. Second, it's it is introduced right at the end of the third issue, okay. and I'm not gonna lie, I can't. I I'm usually not a big fan of killing off villains. I don't need all my villains to die, but when they got to issue four and he was falling into the pit, falling into the trash pit, I was just like. Toy you Story freestyle. I'm rip off the OVA. Bye, bye. I don't. I don't. I don't. I could not bring myself to give a shit about him. Like not only because just in universe, if it just takes a kick to the head for him to go into sociopath mode, he's more of a liability. He's just a liability at that point. But but it's a fancy story. They could easily fix that. No big deal. But was it not, was it not the metal knuckles uh, virus thing though? No, no. It was just him getting kicked in the head. That's the reason why at the that's the reason why at the middle of issue four when Sonic kicks him to the head he gets back to normal. There was oh, no man. infection. I was actually expecting for the be an infection too. I don't know if that would have been better, but I'm not wild about what we got because now we just kind of have this character who's ultimately meant to be the antagonist of the story, whose whole thing is just going through his own like a uh, whiny phase. It was just basically going through like a whiny emo phase, and I'm just like yeah. I, I think they need him to be the villain of this because it's like it's it's Mega Sonic MK2. We need him to be the bad guy because he's cool. Um, which is but, the pro- which is kind of the- which, which is the problem because uh, his like motives are really flimsy. Where it's like 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 you said, he wants to get off this island, um, and he wants to like I, I think get revenge on Eggman. <laughs> I, I think that at least that's what it's implied uh, from what I see. Um, yeah, and he wants to be guys- free. He feels like uh, he feels like he's trapped within like his his coding as well because he wants to be in Sonic's body, right? Right. I, I think that, but it sounded like that was just an excuse just to get off the island, from what he said. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, because he's like, you're free, you know, you can do whatever. So, uh, yeah, um, it, yeah uh, it's a good chunk of the story is about his own self loathing about who he is and stuff. But like I said, they didn't do a good job of establishing a lot of the stuff in Act One, other than just relying on basic on kind of a visual aesthetic to rely on us just having general empathy for someone being in the situation. I'm not really given a reason to directly care or get emotionally invested with Mechasonic's story for the first half. And by the second half, I'm already after the point where he started to do a bunch of damage. So at this point, trying to make me feel sorry for him is just making excuses. And I'm just like, no, I like, yeah, I know it's kind of sucks that you are dealing with a bunch of self-loathing and you don't like feeling like trash and your creator just left you to the wayside and never looked for you again. But that's not an excuse to try to steal someone's body. Like, no. And, or and well, 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 and, someone's body or well, going and, out there and attacking a bunch of other people and robots. Like, no, fuck off. Well, and like, it it could be if I spent any time with you. Yes. Like, if, like, you know, I, you know, we can, uh, as viewers, can, uh, can accept, you know, quite a bit from a character uh, mm-hmm. if we spend enough time with them. Like, you know, uh, the classic example is uh, Zuko. Zuko does pretty bad things for all of season one, uh, but we uh, really like oh, him. Yeah. But we really, really like him because uh, you know when we find out what his like true nature is and his past, and we spend all this time with him. Also, it helps that he's funny; like he has yeah. funny moments, and that can endear yeah. you to a character really easily. Yes. Lyra likes him, blah 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 blah. But with Mecha Sonic, this is kind of a general problem I have with IDW is like they spend so much time to get to one point of the character's journey. And it's like, I really feel like you should have set up that he was like friends with Sigma in like a, not in like, obviously he cares about Sigma in the same way he cares about all the other Scrapniks, but only in like a, so much as they tell me that is the case, yeah. <laughs> you know, like well, they well, should have, they, yeah. they should have shown, they should have shown me like him doing something that would endear me to like that dynamic. So that again, if Sigma was going to be in the story, 
then when he gets betrayed, like you could have some drama with that and he could have to make that decision of like, do I, would I rather stay on this Island with this, this family I have and, you know, maybe one day hope to get off or can I take this guaranteed out and uh, also maybe validate myself by taking out Sonic at the same time. Um, right. And sure. You could probably infer that, but I just feel like I want to see it in the book <laughs> you know yeah um, I, 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 I don't, I, yeah like, i get you this is one of the problems with a lot that i see with idw where it seems to almost live and die on how much the audience can project and head canon elements into the story in order to make it work which i don't give points for that i want to see this stuff expl- see this stuff explicit in story you don't need to monologue about every last thing but at least give me a reason to get invested with the character beforehand and to be clear i'm not saying you can't have a character do bad thing do bad things uh do bad things and try to make me feel sorry for them after the facts. My problem is give me a reason to like feel some amount of emotional connection to them beforehand. Cause I got none of that in the first two issues. So by the time we're getting this in issue four, this is after he's already tried assault, uh, assaulting all the other scrap Nicks, try going after uh try stealing Sonic's, Sonic's body, ended up trying to throw tails into the trash, which side note, why can tails just fly up? But whatever we need to get him out of the story. And then I mean, they I'm, guessing that's how he's, I'm guessing I'm guessing that's the implication of like how he survived or whatever because he comes right. back at the end. But yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. But point, uh, but my point being here is not that you can't ever have sympathetic villains. I just don't want to be given that as an excuse for why they're doing oh for why the why they're doing the bad stuff. If they end up doing bad stuff, have them realize what they're doing is bad and then try making up, then actually doing something to make up for it, not just try to give a Freudian excuse for why they're doing this stuff in the first place. Uh, like, I actually don't think Zoro's a, uh, not Zoro, I don't think Zuko's a good comparison here because while Zuko ends up doing a lot of bad stuff, uh, does a lot of bad stuff, we all, even ignoring the quote unquote, the good stuff he ends up doing alongside while he's ultimately trying to hunt down Aang, by the time he's ultimately looking to try to. Uh, to work with Ang and be his fire lord t- tutor, I mean fire bending tutor. He's already accepted the fact of yeah, working with this, uh, working with the Fire Nation is wrong. I need to go help with the Avatar. Looking to try and is ultimately trying to make efforts to try to actually. Oh, oh yes, yes. Uh, mine was more a general point of just being able to uh, enjoy hanging out with terrible people in a story. Because yes. I agree, I agree with you. Because yeah, that's what makes his redemption arc a redemption <laughs> you know and what you're and yeah. what your criticism right is that uh and this is where yeah it's a bad comparison where what your criticism is that like uh mecha doesn't really get a redemption he just mm-hmm. is kind of a shithead the whole time and then mm-hmm. sonic's like cut it out and then he's like i'm gonna kill myself now and then sonic's like cut that out too but he's like oh sorry and then <laughs> the end <laughs> by by the way mm-hmm. uh i i think uh i, I mentioned this uh, earlier but I think like the one the one thing with the uh, the the mini series that's definitely like a little bit of an asterisk on that self containedness is the fact that Sonic mentions how like oh I should probably stop uh, trying to redeem all these people I, I paraphrase but he has like a line like that about mm-hmm. how he keeps trying to like redeem all the villains in the main book and it constantly coming back to basically fuck him in the ass. And well, every, and every and, I'm glad to drop it up because this is the other problem I have. This is the other reason why I have such a negative problem with the book is because of Sonic himself. Yes, because Sonic complete- sucks. Huh? It's <laughs> because Sonic sucks. Yes. Now, he's yeah, not so always go, go in the it. main book, so that's already points. But he still ends up dragging it down because, again, it. I don't know who's responsible for this with IDW because it was kind of a thing in Reboot. Like, I was going back through the Werehog arc, and they were kind of doing the same thing there, but instead of with Sonic, it was with Mighty. But they're doing the same thing here, where they kind of seem to be missing the point of why peop- bad people end up doing bad things in the first place. The issue, like, Sonic keeps trying to frame the issue around, like, they just need to move forward. They just need to, like, progress. And I'm like, no, that makes sense from a writer's perspective who's tired of seeing the same shit and seeing the franchise do the same shit over and over again. In universe, when it comes to actually referring to people directly, that's not their problem. Like that's Mega Sonic's problem to a certain extent. But when it comes to 
Eggman and Metal, their problem isn't that they're not moving forward. They are moving forward towards their motivations. That is what they're looking to try to do. Their problem is that they are looking to try to hurt people. They are looking to try to take over the world. They have no regard. They have they have complete disregard for all life. Their issue is not moving forward. The issue is that they're fucking so they're fucking psychopaths. So when I end up seeing Sonic continue to try to do this uh, this monologue here, which fortunately only happens like once, I'm just kind of rolling my eyes a little bit. Now I think the speech here and how he tries applying it to me to Mecca at the end is a bit better, or at the very least it makes some kind of sense here. It's just I'm not wild about the fact of that it's not that well supported throughout most of the story because Sonic's kind of because the real problem with Sonic in this issue is just kind of how much of a non-entity he is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you're, like, you're you're just more like exhausted from it, where it's like it's like from a big picture perspective, it's like sure it finally like that's what I said to you when we first talked uh, is I was like, well, good job, Barnes. You finally actually had you actually allowed Sonic to redeem someone with his stupid moral philosophy. Finally, yes. but it just doesn't feel earned. Because Sonic yeah. is like a non-entity for the whole arc. The yes. whole arc, he is just being SpongeBob and just walking around and be like, whoa, freak out moment for Tails in 3, 2, 1. And then, you know, he's... Ouchie, he's like, my shoe hurts. <laughs> yes. If if Knuckles fought, saw me here, he'd be making fun of me. Uh, You know, and he's just like, hey, man, want to like high five, handshake? And then he gets like slammed against a wall. No, 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 no handshake. And then he just keeps talking and talking and talking. Please stop, Sonic. <laughs> but yeah, he's just like a non-character the whole time. And then at the end, he's giving his big speech. And I just don't, like, from an in-universe, from if it's a self-contained story, right, it's a problem because we, we don't have any buildup. And then if we take the big picture of, like, well, this is an extension of what Sonic is usually like, well, then I'm just annoyed because I the Sonic's an asshole. So yeah. like <laughs> and uh, I, I do want to, I do want to keep, saying like i do like this uh mini series i do think it's pretty good uh it's not great compared to <laughs> like to what i kind of wanted mm -hmm. um but yeah, there's definitely like nitpicks and issues of it where it's the, the nitpicks being like how unexplored and how like not deep as i wanted the the, the location to be or maybe how like the characters are fleshed out um, the new ones, specifically. Um, and then just, like, genuine complaints where Metal Knuckles' is whole, like, deal and how, like, kind of boring he is as a character because he's not really a character. He's just an evil robot. Um, then there's, you know, Sigma not really being that fleshed out, but I do get, like, how you just see it as him being, like, the, the face of the rest of the crowd, which is, yeah. I, I guess, a perspective. Uh, which is fine. Uh, I, I don't share that one, though. I, I would have liked him to be a bit more important. Oh, no, no, I no, guess. no. To be clear, no, no. That just didn't bother me as much because I saw what his role was supposed to be. Oh, I still okay. agree with you guys. He should have gotten more characterization than what he got. Uh, then, then there's just, like, uh, how they... Uh, uh, someone, someone made a tweet about this, how, like, the Sonic comics seem to keep bringing up, like, concepts and they'd never explore them that well. One being, like, the amnesia subplot, where it's literally two issues. Mm -hmm. And this issue having... Uh, well, two issues having the brain swap thing happen. But it doesn't go yes. anywhere. It's literally introduced at, like, the final third issue. And then in issue four, where it's about to happen, and all that comes out of it is they share thoughts for a bit. And, and, and then Sonic cries. Yes. Um, but it's not his I, tears. It's Mecha Sonic's tears, which... I mean, I thought it was cute. I, I'm not gonna lie. I thought it was cute. I think I would have, I would have liked it if it just they did anything else with the brain connection thing. I, yeah. I would, I would have liked, really... I would have liked them to get like some slapstick out of it. Where it's like, like Sonic hits himself, and that's like Mecha Sonic's like thoughts, and then Sonic's like, maybe I can use this against Mecha, and then. Mecha yeah, that's Sonic what I. Himself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what that's what I was talking about. It's like if the fight had like any creative. Like, any creative thing's happening. Like, there's that one spread, right, where it's, like, the, you know, it's the trash compactor. Um, and then, like, you, they're just spinning around it or whatever. And then you have little shots of them fighting. But, like, it's very, they're not they're not actually, like, doing anything interesting. It's just them hitting each other in those little frames. And yeah, it's like, they why just can't kind you, of, why, they just kind why of wouldn't run. You use, 
just kind of yeah, roll towards well, it and then bounce yeah. off each other, I think. Yeah, it's yes. like, why wouldn't you use the environment or, like like you said, use the little brain connective thing? So to me, by the end where it's just like they use it for the uh, the tears, it just kind of feels like, oh, okay, I see. It was just for this moment. Whatever. It's very, Get it's out very, of here. It's a very cool locale. It, I, I said it before. It's just like Toy Story 3 moment where, it, where they're all in, like, the, the thing at the end, in the incinerator. Yeah. Um, also, they straight up just copied OVA. And how yes. like Sonic X also like copied OVA. Um, if you if you know like how they do that scene where it's mm -hmm. like grab a hold of my hand, and it's like yeah, there can only be one Sonic. E even X copied that with the Cedrians. It's not their official name, but there's a scene where Knuckles tries to like grab the old man out, and he and he sort of slaps his hand away. <laughs> and they do that here where Sonic's like grab a hold of my hand, and Mecha Sonic's like Duma dooming. Um, and and I and I and again, I do like this issue, uh, this mini series. But there's just all of like the nitpicks and genuine like little complaints I have. Just kind of put a like a little bit of a dour note on it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it just kind of feels like this is a great story concept and a, a bunch of cool elements, mm -hmm. but they feel flimsy. They don't all work well. And though I, I still would say that compared to everything I have read, which is like over 30 issues of the main IDW book, that this has a better, um, what is it, pacing and and uh, order? What, what, what was the word you described it as? Like the uh, structure. Uh, structure, yeah. Like, I would say this has like the best structure, but there's definitely a lot of like little loose ends and strange ties where it's like, uh, I think Lav said it before, where it's how it introduces contents, uh, concepts in each uh, issue, but the way they go about them, it feels like they they just bring them up where it's would have been more natural if they maybe foreshadowed elements like earlier on, where, where they'd be more natural and uh, just kind of better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, I just thought of this: how if you wanted to do. Um something creative with the kind of the environment for like the horror aspect. If you wanted to bring that back, uh, they set up that take. Cause one of the things I did back was the little scene where, uh, that, that did endear me to the scrap nicks. And like whenever Mecha Sonic destroyed or was like hurting one, I did feel bad for the little scrap nicks. I was like, I felt bad. And that, and the reason for that was because of the little scene where he's like, Oh, I'm going to make a translator so that they can speak. And then, um, one of them goes, hello. And then, like, all the other badniks are like, whoa, he can talk. And so they go over to Tails and they're like, hello, hello, hello. Like, they're all trying to, you know, they're trying to Very get cute. it. They yeah. sound like, little, you know, they're little kids, like, trying to be like, oh, no, me, me, me. Um, and so I thought, like, they have the little thing where he translates for Mechasonic. And I think it would have been really cool if you wanted to add to that horror aspect, have Mechasonic's monologue come through the tablet. Um, and so, like, Tails is wandering around trying to, like, look for him. But he can, but Mecha Sonic can still like monologue from like within Tails's tablet, which is what he's trying to take from him in the first place. Just you know, just doing creative things like that where I didn't feel like they did. Whereas when they did do that with the little Scrapniks, that felt like a genuine like, like trying to humanize these little creatures as like little kids. And I mm -hmm. bought it, and I liked it, and I just wanted more of that. You know? Yeah. The mm -hmm. the horror uh, direction is at odds with the story itself. Yeah, is is what I think. Uh, is, I feel. Do you disagree? No, I agree. Same. And to follow up a little bit, when it comes to the whole crying thing, it's kind of just the same thing that Waffles was talking about a little bit. I would be fine with that, or hell, even even applaud that if they had done more with the uh, with the mind connection other than just kind of having that one little conversation they had at the beginning of issue four. And then we just kind of bring this back around in order to have Mecha Sonic's tears come out through Sonic. And, but that's all they end up really going for with it. So when I end up seeing that scene, I'm not seeing, oh, uh, yeah, this is like a really emotional scene from Mecha. I'm seeing, oh, Barnes found a way to get around the Sonic can't cry, uh, Sonic can't cry, uh, quote unquote rule or whatever so but even without that context it just kind of comes off um this is just a, a cute way to try to end the story without it actually being properly built up for, throughout everything else 
it's yeah, I was gonna say the, as... the, the biggest problem is just that I don't care about Mecha Sonic, so I don't care yes. if he's crying. Like, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it so, would have yeah, helped a little bit better if his story wasn't just about him. Uh, if the last like issue and a half wasn't just about him whining about feeling like trash and making that everyone else's problem, if if they actually just allowed me to actually connect with him as a character. And for example, I was kind of talking to you about this before Waffles, but I actually think the story would have been better if Mecha wasn't the antagonist. Like instead we are fighting, yeah. like he is meant to be another character fighting alongside Sonic while they're dealing with another threat. Like they're dealing with another threat. Like instead of them being like in this isolated island, let's say they are in a factory with a bunch of uh, a, they're in a factory where they can't leave because uh, an abandoned factory that they can't leave because they end up getting all their energy from that and they can't go far they can't go too far out of it without risking their power or something and the whole idea is that instead of them being the threat like an outside town or some other like leader who's like we need to take this factory down and all robots are bad and whatever and let them be the antagonist and I feel like that would lead a lot better into Mecha Sonic's whole, like, I feel like trash. No one's going to respect me. So instead of him lashing out against his friends and against people who are actually trying to be supportive, he's actually doing that and leading to the whole conflict between him and between him and whoever is looking to lead the charge about taking out all the scrap next. That would be a lot. I feel like that would be a lot cleaner of a way to establish uh, his issue, uh, establish his conflict without trying to have him turn into a villain the last five minutes. You could yeah. also, it also, that would also work because then you could actually have someone have any conflict with Sonic as far as like a civilian where they're like, Sonic, you traitor. Like he's a, he's a robot, obviously. Like, why are you working with him? You know? And then Sonic yeah. would actually have to like, you know, d discuss something with someone or whatever. Um, or uh, something I was sad that they never come back to because um, it's just used to get them on the island uh, I was like, where did the storm come from? And then they explain it. They say that there is a weather generator machine on the island and it went out of whack and that's how they got here. And that never comes back, but that's such a cool idea. Yeah, there's it's a strange, like, strange. They just never bring it back up. It's Yeah, because I was like, I was fine with it just being a storm. But no, they like explicitly explain it is like a storm generator. So mm -hmm. how cool, you know, I, at I, my... Again. Um, again, actually, just to turn just to turn back around to Lav's uh, point is maybe the generator could have been the villain. Uh, sorry, that, the generator could would, have been the villain. Yeah. Uh, that's what I was yeah. just about to say. Is that what if the uh, we have a force of nature situation where like we get on the island and it's like, oh, you know, you crashed because of the generator thing, but don't worry, it's probably fine now. Um, but then we actually find out that Sigma's lying and he's actually a you know it's actually been doing this for a while and. You know, sure, you know, they're able to hold out and bunker down, but it's actually getting worse every day. And he thinks eventually she's going to blow them all off the island. But he's afraid to ask, like, Sonic for help, or he feels like, well, you know, but I'm a bad Nick. So, like, panic. Uh, or he's like, or he's like, I'm a bad Nick. Who am I to ask Sonic for mercy? Like, we're just living on borrowed time anyway. And then Sonic can be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Of course I will help you. Like, after having an issue or two of them kind of working together. And then the final two issues would be about splitting up Tails and his team. And then Mecha Sonic and his team, so they can stop this generator, and then they can actually work on a way of getting them off the island. It could just be something and as simple as like they don't want to ask Tails and Sonic for help to get off the island. They want to do things on their own, or like I said, they feel like they aren't worthy of doing that. And Sonic mm -hmm. and Tails are like, "No, of course you, you're worthy. You're cool people. Like, why wouldn't we help you? Of course we'll help you." And if um, they like, whereas, if they like really whereas, wanted to like, if they really wanted to like put some like the the like fan service fight scene in. Maybe the reason why Mega Sonic and uh, Metal Knuckles fight is because they don't believe that Sonic wants to help, and it's like you just want to destroy us because you're you're Sonic, and we're just bad nicks. You're you're tricking us, and Sonic's like, I'm I'm not tricking you. I'm a good guy. We got like a little fight scene uh, that just results in them de being defeated, and then they're like on the ground, like, watch, you're gonna destroy us, and then Sonic's like, nah, -uh, switches it off. And then it's like, well, wait, you helped us? It's like, yep. I'm or a good a, guy. Or, you know, uh, just and yeah, just anything yeah. to where it's like you have a reason to have these characters work together instead of like you're saying, Lav, where it's just like instead of spending all this time doing nothing with metal and then at the very end going, ooh, he's got a tragic backstory. Uh, why not just make metal cool from the start? 
and we just, you know, we can have conflict. Not all yeah. conflict has to be life or death. Sonic yeah, Me Mecha Sonic. Me yeah, Mecha Sonic could have been this island's own, like, Sonic. Yeah, he could have just <laughs> yeah, been, way. They, could have, they could just have some tension where, like, they're not used to working together or they don't really trust each other. And then they just become bros, you know? Yeah. It doesn't have to be that dramatic. You know, no, it's cool. Yeah. Could, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Um, and, and I'm just kind of, again, just to circle back to the Shekhov scone I mentioned. I'm really bummed out that the plot didn't end with, like... See, this is what I thought issue four was going to be. I thought Sonic and Mecha were going to fight. As usual, Sonic can't win in these issues. So Sonic's about to die, but not really. And then just as Mecha Sonic pulls back his fist, and he's about to, to, to put a hole through Sonic's face, Tails appears, and he's like, wait! And then Mecha, Sonic, and Sonic look over, and it's Tails, and he's got the flower in the pot. And then Mecha stops, and he's like, he has like a flashback, like a Vietnam flashback, and he remembers like the flower, and that symbolizes some something. He's like, "Oh my God, I, I, I nearly just did a bad thing," and then he yeah, like you, you gets just thought away it was gonna matter. You just thought the flower was gonna matter at all. Yes, I thought it was gonna come back and be an important story, like plot point where it would mm -hmm. tie things all together, and it's like, oh, what a the flower symbolizes something and it's special and it, it that that's the true meaning of this issue or something and yeah because how do you because how, how do you guys feel about the fact that like sure you know obviously we'll find out in the future if they ever pay this off but it really does just feel kind of flaccid to like they end the story and it's just like well hopefully you guys leave the island one day <laughs> Yeah, it's very strange the way they just... Yeah, I, I don't know why, like, why can't they just, like, get some boats or some planes or something? Yeah, like, I was gonna say, why, why can't they like... literally just time skip and just be like, all right, and then a week later, the Restoration built a big ship and they went and got everybody. Yeah, what? I, I guess they just want to leave it maybe open-ended to maybe either continue this later or to retcon them into the main issue or something. But like, you can I, do that without abandoning them on a on an island. This is like yeah, I I they should have had they should have had like two more pages where it's just like time skip and like you said, get them a boat or or the the planes fixed and it's like all right guys, I wish you the best and everyone's like see ya Sonic, see ya, make sure to send a post cards or something it's like oh right yeah my, my guess is that they you know barnes and evan and flynn probably you know talk and have like you know the next year or whatever planned out i would probably guess unless they just drop this which i don't think they will i will probably guess that there will be some oh, sort of big big thing going on and then they will show up in the egg carrier which they're i i can i i i guarantee they're gonna bring back mechasonic and milk him for all his worth i guarantee yeah they are gonna. Yeah, I mean, I mean that would be a genuine. I mean that would be a genuine like, cool guy moment that this comic has never really done before, where like, we're on our back foot or whatever, and then it's like I don't know. You again, you'd see him in the sky. It's like, what's that? Oh my gosh, it's Eggman! And then Sonic's like, no, it's the Egg Plan, and it's like all our friends come in and they help us. That so, would yeah. be cool though. Here's the thing. There's a part of me that's just like, I don't want that to happen. Not like. Forget my issues. Let's just say th this story was a 10 out of 10 for me. I wouldn't even mind them coming back into the story, but I don't want them to continue to milk these guys because one of the biggest I problems I have with IDW is that it almost refuses to try to do anything new or or anything, it, like tries to add any new elements to his own story. It just feels the need to almost recycle almost, ev recycle almost everything. Like we haven't really, like the only other major villain we've gotten to this point is at is Starline, and he's just a diet version. He's just a diet furry version of Eggman. But what about the possum guy? Here's the problem. I would have loved to have counted him, but at this point, he, he's cert, he's a. But at this point, he's rough and tumble tier. He's basically what, what just a, a step beyond a joke. What about Mimic? That guy. You mean the character we haven't seen show up since Bad <laughs> Guys and even if he did? You've already covered multiple times that he's only really good to work off of. He only makes sense bouncing off of Whisper and no one else. 
<laughs> yeah, that guy. That 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 great guy. <laughs> my my favorite thing. My favorite thing Flynn ever said about that character is he was like, "So what if?" Uh, they were like, "What if Mimic turned into like Maria and walked up to Shadow and like tried to kill him?" And he basically said like, "Oh yeah, that's kind of Mimic's uh, whole thing, right? Is that like he transforms into someone and then he only gets one good shot?" And I'm like, "Why would you write a character like that? He's never gonna get his one good shot. What the fuck is wrong with you?" <laughs> yeah. At least like the TF2 spy, if he misses a knife shot and then they turn around to like start shooting back, he has a gun to pull out. <laughs> like, yeah, but, I, but like, I'm why sorry, would, yeah, I'm why would you design a character yeah, that? Like, me, I, can, I can keep that going because Flynn has a thing about designing villains like that, but that's the whole other conversation. My problem well, is I want what the about story Surge, to huh? huh? What about Surge? What about Surge and Kit love? <laughs> what about those two? <laughs> you mean the characters who are meant to be based off of a glitch from another game? Yes, those two lovable yeah. guys. Yeah, those two. So my problem here is I want to see new elements. I want to. I don't want to just get more remember berries or just a continuing need for this franchise, continuing need for this comic to say, "See, we're part of the game universe. See, we're continuing to use things out from this game that you remember. See, see." And I don't mind this in. Um, Scrapnik Island for the most part. I think self-contained for the premise alone, it's fine. And fun fact, in a little bit, I'm going to explain to you how Dirk just unintentionally raised my score from a four to a five. But oh. when it comes to this series in particular, when it comes to the story overall, I want them to start branching out and start bringing in new elements. Not new characters, not new, not, not new OCs to join the quote-unquote good side, I want them to start using the game characters, but start putting them in new situations, having them go up against new antagonists. They don't even need to be How? as big of a threat as Eggman, but they should be at least doing something to challenge and explore their characters in, di in different facets. Even if you can't go to extremes or completely overhaul their characters, you can at least do something, something with them to show them in different lights. Like, have Rouge actually have to steal something for good and actually see and seeing how that push and pull ends up working off against her. Um, show Amy actually having show Amy actually having to be the one to deal with this weird morality of thinking that everyone has some good deep down inside and having to realize that that's not true, having to come to the adult realization that that's not true, or even if it is, you can't put other people's lives lives in danger for uh, for that belief, and going through that and doing that kind of stuff with all the characters, and try to bring in new villains, new elements, new mechanics in the story instead of just regurgitating and reusing. Elements that we've already seen for past games. There are only so many games you can keep doing that with. So yeah. Please. What if they did Sonic Heroes again though? Huh? What if they did Sonic Heroes a third time? You joke, but I'm pretty sure that's what the next arc is going to be in the main line. Sonic Avengers, like what is it, seven now? In like the comics series, four. like how they keep. This four. is four. Uh, this is the fourth time they're going to do all. They're doing a Sonic Avengers thing. This is the fourth to, time they're doing it. Just to add my own perspective on why I don't want like these characters to return and why I want this to be like a self-contained thing is because I just don't want to see Mecha Sonic be written shit by um. Well, I don't want him to be executed not as well. Uh, he was already kind of flimsy. I don't want to see him even worse. Is what oh, I'm saying. I'll, let me just go. Ahead. Let me just. I know you don't want to say it. I'll say it for you. I don't want to see Mecha Sonic being written shit by Evan by Evan or Flynn because I don't. I don't trust either one of them. Like, I also I don't do want to see him. Huh? I, I also don't want to see his character arc. I say with quotations, mm -hmm. go from hero question mark to I'm evil again because I feel like that's probably what's just going to happen. That would be what I, 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 it either I, would be I, that or it would just be about showing how much Mecha Sonic suffers because that's really well, all they really seem to like doing. Yeah, they they love making characters suffer in this because apparently that's fun. Mm -hmm. But if it if it wasn't that, they would probably just make him a reskin shadow, honestly. Probably. So, yeah. But... Oh yeah, he's evil and fights Sonic. He's a douche now, and he's a rival, even though he wasn't really characterized that well. Like, no. Nah. Yeah. But well, uh, but I'm actually interested, Lav. Why did you bump your score up? Yeah. Because there's one thing here that I've been complaining about with IDW since almost its inception, and they finally did it. And you know what? I'm going to give Barnes credit on this. They finally allowed Sonic to win a fight on his own. <gasps> hey, there you go. I'm going to give it a point on that. I'm going to give it a point. I, I, because honestly, I stand by all the criticisms, but again, the league's better. Those problems are leagues better than anything I've been seeing in the main line or in the other main or other miniseries. The only one I think comes close to not being that shit 
is the Tangle and Whisper thing, but even that comes off like a diet version of an arc in Full Metal Alchemist. So here, I actually think this work. I actually do think that it still has some major problems, but it still has a couple of things that could work for it. And in another universe, I could see this actually being done exceptionally well. So for the fact that they are able to allow Sonic to actually to actually land a blow on a villain to end a fight, I'm giving points for that. I'm giving points for that because that's the only arc. Because correct me if I'm wrong, this is like one of the three times I think this has happened throughout all of IDW. And I think I'm rounding up with that. Uh, I mean, as far as I can remember, the Zeddy was him and Tails, or it was just Tails putting the little gadget. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mecha Sonic, we just took out his little gem, or Metal Sonic, I mean, like Mecha, Mecha Madness or whatever he's called. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I can't think of too many. No, nope. poor Tails, though, like he suits up like all this badass style, <laughs> and yeah. then he just gets completely <laughs> punked out. Um, I love how like uh, Daniel Barnes like made a comparison to the to the Tails one shot, which I completely forgot to mention before because it kind of is that forgettable, honestly. Uh-huh. But uh, that was actually pretty good. Uh, uh, I would give that like a seven. Um, okay, it, it was cute. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was, yeah, no. it was cute. Yeah, it really it really does suck that uh, uh, Tails is just forever useless. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah. Poor everyone who has to be in this book, like. I as much as I can't complain about the fact of like there's no real reason that they have to keep uh, keep Knuckles uh out of the plot, it's probably for the best they stays out of the plot because he doesn't end up getting fucked over like every other character in the story. So you know what? Yeah, I feel sorry for almost everyone has to be in this book, including the OCs. Yeah. But also apparently this uh this book is supposed to take place during issues fifty six and fifty seven. Uh so like between like a- you mean. I, yeah, between, between, yeah. Uh, it's all like I mean, yeah, that would make Wait, uh, 50, so 56 was the last one, Lav, right? Yes. Oh, man, so that really does confirm that Sonic just goes back to, like, doing what he normally does. Like, there was no, like, we're going after Eggman soon. Yep. Well, there you go. No, remember, <laughs> yeah, remember, issue 57, the whole synopsis for it is that Sonic doesn't even choose to go after Eggman. He has to have Bell tell Sonic her. go after Eggman. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm very, I'm very much looking forward to seeing the next time Sonic and Eggman interact, so that I can, you know, be proven right that uh, that ending scene means nothing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I hope something comes of that, but I, you, I, I doubt it. Yeah, but as far as my score, um, I would also give it a five. I think that uh, uh, the highest praise I. Is that or besides that the art is really good and i would like to see um eh, not really not really this style it really does just fit for this um yeah. so yeah no just on its own um artistically like it's it's mwah, i love i love looking at it i i think it all looks really great um just like color wise and like the like kind of the the graininess of it um mm-hmm. that's my favorite part of it um but you know i think the arc overall is inoffensive i never left an issue upset i never left an issue feeling like wow you really wasted this it was just kind of more like you guys sure did the bare minimum and that's disappointing but it's not terrible you know yeah. i could see um like you said uh derp i could see like just kind of enjoying this just from like a vibe perspective of like you're just kind of letting it take you with you you love looking at the imagery the the character designs are super sick and it's like oh it's kind of a cool idea oh i kicked him in the face that's kind of cool at the end yeah <laughs> you know yeah so yeah but yeah I'd, yeah I'd give it a round of five it's fine question mark yeah. <laughs> so there you go do you guys have anything else to say uh I, i'll just give my like i guess this is closing thoughts um yeah like I said before, I gave like the Tails one shot like a seven. Um, it's kind of weird though because I don't consider that part of like the Sonic IDW continuity because it's it's not it's detached and it's part of like the Mania AU thing going on. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I kind of I kind of ignore it. Um, but that was like pretty good. But like with with this mini series, uh, I really did kind of go into it with like, all right, no expectations, open mind. Let's hope this is good. It's by Daniel Barnes. It's like a new start, and the concept is interesting, so let's see where it goes. And 
by the end of issue one, I, I, I liked it. And I, when I finished issue one, I really wanted to fall in love with this arc. And I just kind of got sad by the end where looking back on it all, it's, it's very flimsy and there's a lot of nitpicks and issues here and there where it, I like, I really want to fall in love with this arc. And I, I love the, the character designs and the artwork and some of the concepts and stuff, but it doesn't connect well and it doesn't fire on all cylinders. Like I was hoping and it just puts a down note on it where it's mm-hmm. like, I wanted this to be a, to be a 10. I was then backpedaling, like maybe it can still be a nine. And then it just pushed back enough where it's like, no, it, it's not an eight. And now, now I'm left here where it's, where, where it's a seven for me, which isn't bad. <laughs> I, I know Twitter's like, oh, anything below a nine is, is bad, but it's not, it's, it's not bad. Uh, I think it's good. It's just not great. And, uh, I, I really just wanted to be great, you know, um, mm-hmm. which is a shame because I, I, I do, I do like this again. Um, I just wanted to love it, uh, which I don't. However, totally, totally fair. However, compared to every single thing I've read uh, in IDW, even like the one shot, which is cute, um, I, I do, I do like this, and I did enjoy it. And honestly, I can now confidently say that I am not an, a Sonic IDW hater. I am just someone that doesn't like ninety nine percent of it. <laughs> 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 I like I like one percent of Sonic IDW's continuity. <laughs> yeah, you're technically not a hater, which is the worst, which is the best kind of anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> to to follow up on that, yes, I get to join you in that uh, get to join you in that group, Derp. I do not hate everything with IDW. No, I actually was able to say yes, this was a fine five out of ten story. Yay, you were able to do the bare minimum. You didn't leave me feeling miserable. I didn't want to completely punch your main character in the face. It's fine. I was also in your camp derp where I'm just like, yes, I want this to be good. I do want these stories to be good. I don't gain anything from saying these these arcs are shit. I would love to be able to say, Flynn put out something that was genuinely amazing. Bars put out something that was amazing. This new guy is great. I'd love to say that. I would be thrilled to be able to put uh just be able to like actually say that the series is good but i'm not going to just um give positives or just say that it's great just for the sake of just appeasing other people i've always i've always hated anyone i've always hated reviewers who try doing that so when it comes to the story on its own i am not going to say i hated the premise i don't think um i wasn't wild about this being a marketed as a horror and by the end of it i really don't think it should even been attempted to be a horror they should have just been honest with the idea of it's a robot, it's a city full of scrap robots, but they're good, and just run with that. Um, but with the story on its own, it is functional. It just makes a lot of weird creative decisions to both hit a theme that really shouldn't be in Sonic in the first place, both and a genre that, not to say it's impossible for Sonic to hit, but... IDW Sonic isn't really designed to get to horror that easily. So I think it was kind of playing off of a playing with one arm tied behind his back. But I do think for what we ended up getting, it is ultimately functional. And I I will say this, I wasn't wild about Barnes's reaction or the very least post after the comic ended up dropping. But I would like to say that You're talking I, about the huh? Super Mario Bros. E uh thing yeah just for some context he ended up going on twitter after that ended up getting posted to after the super mario bros z reference got posted to twitter daniel barnes went on to twitter to say don't ask don't ask me for anything else ever again and i'm i'm not wild about the arrogance that comes with that tweet just because i'm like even if this was 10 out of 10 i'm just I, i feel like that's a little a little much, but I will say this. I go, Amy. Yeah. I look for, I do hope that he does take this as a stepping stone in order to become a great writer, because I feel like of the three that we've gotten so far, I feel like Daniel is probably the best that we have, So is the best of the three so far, and I'm hoping that he doesn't rest on his laurels and actually looks to try to actually improve instead of just 
continue to put out the same stuff that he did here because because I genuinely do because I genuinely do think this is good and I do yes. really hope I do really hope that he does improve as a writer because yeah I'm gonna be honest now uh, if any time Daniel's names comes up in like the writing credits for anything after this mm -hmm. I'm probably gonna definitely check it out now <laughs> uh, in the Sonic continuity uh, comics because I do kind of want to follow where he goes uh, as like a writer and see mm -hmm. how he improves. Um, I and I hope he uh, improves. Um, Same. And just to, to go back around on the Sonic uh, Super Mario Bros. Uh, Z thing, uh, I like that reference. Uh, it's it's harmless, it's cute, and it's not really like out of place where it's open your heart lyrics. You know, yeah. Um, it's just I I'll crush you, and out of con like out of context, that's just a cool like like death threat line. But if you know Super Mario. Bro Z, that's a cool little like reference to the line he says when he goes super mecha. Um, yeah. So it's not really out of place and it's just cute. Uh, I, I like that reference. Uh, I kind of, I'm not going to lie, I would kind of like to see more fan references to like fan, like Sonic media, I think. I think that wouldn't be too harmful. Be I would definitely take it over. Be I would careful definitely. What you wish for. I mean, I know what you mean, but I'll take it over like. Open your heart lyrics any day, you know. <laughs> I mean, yes, it's better than trying to force song lyrics into dialogue because that's because if you do reference, because if you do notice it, it's just like, oh god, why? But simultaneously, one of the other problems with IDW references is not just that they end up using song lyrics, but that they do them all the time. I, I'm so, not saying I want more references. I, I'm just saying. If there could be like an option to like reference Sonic past me like past again mm -hmm. or reference like fan media, I would lean towards the 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 latter because in a way that would be like ce celebrating like what the community's done. And I think that's more wholesome than. Do you remember Sonic Adventure One? Well, we've got four robots and also a bunch of quotes from Eggman himself. Get a load of this. Get a load of this. Get a load of this. It's like. Uh, yeah, I would rather take fan references than nostalgia pander, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. So, but all right. Is there anything else or is that it? I believe uh, that is it. it. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, do you, are we plugging anything or are we just heading out and saying bye? Uh, oh, Derp, plug your Twitter. I have a Twitter. It is 2 derpader. All right, that's all right. All. And all right. And I'm Ian Waffles on Twitter, and obviously Lavi Ray is Lavi Ray on Twitter. So I'm thank Lavi you guys Ray so much for everything. watching. Everything. Everything. He's everywhere. Yes. So, <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching, and bye. Bye. bye.